the Enduro Caravan Mover, designed to make life easy. It lets you move your caravan effortlessly on slopes and driveways, and it makes the process of hitching caravan to car simple. Installing the Enduro system is pretty straightforward, and all parts are included for the DIY fit. Ideally, fitting should be carried out in warm, dry conditions, and, if possible, it is a good idea to have some assistance. The fitting procedure may be broken down into three sections, including chassis fitment, electrical connection, initial system engagement and test. The first thing you should do is unpack the boxes and check that the contents are complete and become familiar with the various components and their assembly. You can check this by referencing the assembly diagram at the front of the user manual, and it's a good idea to read the manual before you start. Good preparation will save you time, and it will help with the installation. First, ensure that the caravan is resting on a hard level surface and the handbrake is on. As the mover system will usually be fitted in front of the caravan wheels, it's a good idea to angle the front end up as high as possible. On single axle caravans, this can be done by lowering the front corner steadies as far as possible until the rear of the caravan is nearly touching the ground and sliding an axle stand under the chassis in front of the wheels for additional support. Check that the caravan battery and the mains electrical supply is disconnected. Check that the tires are not excessively worn. New or nearly new tires are the best option to ensure the mover operates correctly. Check that the tire pressures are correct to the manufacturer's recommendation. Make sure the chassis is in good condition without any damage and is free from rust, dirt, etc. Chassis fitment. Step 1. Wire the motors. The two motors should be pre-wired, but if these need to be rewired, simply connect the positive and negative spade terminals to the corresponding motor connections found under the weatherproof covers. Be sure to check that the connectors are installed securely and refer to the wiring diagram in the user manual to make sure the wiring connections are correct. Before you start fitting, check to see that the operation of the mover will not be impeded by ventilation pipes, shock absorbers, a spare wheel, or any other fixtures. Next, position the main crossbar underneath the caravan. Now, loosely assemble the motor units to the crossbar by sliding each motor assembly onto the center bar, but take care when handling and positioning due to the weight of the motor units. The nuts on the crossbar only need to be finger tight at this stage. You will need to lift and loosely connect the two clamping assemblies to the chassis using the nuts and bolts provided. Initially, these should only be finger tight. The cross actuation bar is a telescopic shaft in three sections two end sections and a middle section. The end sections are fitted to the motor units and the middle section locks them both together. Make sure both main crossbar and cross actuation bar are central to the caravan by lining up the markers. With the main assembly now loosely fitted, slide it along the chassis until the rollers are 20 millimeters away from the tires. Use the spaces provided. Be careful to check and ensure the distance, as it is very important that each roller applies the same amount of traction to each tire. If your caravan is fitted with shock absorbers, check to make sure that the motor units do not obstruct them. Before tightening the bolts, make a final check to ensure a 20mm gap between the rollers and the tires. Now the system can be fully secured. Fully tighten the four nylock nuts on both clamping assemblies to a torque setting of 40 foot pounds or 55 newton meters. Next, tighten the four bolts on the main crossbar and the four bolts on the cross actuation assembly to a torque setting of 9 foot pounds or 12 newton meters. Recheck the distance of 20 millimeters from the rollers to the tires and, if necessary, Loosen the bolts and readjust the position of the assembly. Once satisfied with the position of the assembly, fit and tighten the chassis stop nuts and bolts, one pair in each of the upper chassis clamp plates. 
the stop bolts grip the lip of the chassis and help prevent the mover from sliding along the chassis. The main mechanical components have now been installed. Electrical connection. Double check that the caravan leisure battery and any main cables are disconnected. The enduro control unit needs to be housed somewhere safe from the risk of damage, somewhere dry and as close as possible to the battery. A locker is usually the ideal place where the control box may be fitted either vertically or horizontally. Fix the control box firmly into position. Drill a 25mm hole through the floor close to the terminals. Be careful to ensure that there are no obstructions underneath. Later, the motor cables will be passed up through the hull and connected to the control unit. But first, you should fit trunking underneath the caravan and root and protect the external cabling. Leave a small loop of slack near the motors. This will let the motors move freely back and forth when the mover is being engaged and disengaged. It is important that left and right cables are the same length. The trick is to bring left and right to the center of the caravan and then route them onto the control unit. When the internal routing is complete, the cables can be passed up through the hull and cut to the appropriate length. Strip off 5 mm of insulation and attach and crimp the appropriate connectors. Tightly crimped connections are essential as the motors are very powerful and will draw heavy current. Attach the connectors in accordance with the wiring diagram. Now you can route the power supply cables. Be careful to connect the 12 volt power connections correctly. Black to negative, red to positive. Reverse polarity will damage the control unit. The power supply cables should now be routed to the leisure battery. The negative cable will run directly to the battery terminal, but the positive should be connected via the isolation switch. Ideally, the isolation switch should be mounted inside the battery box. The positive cable runs from the control unit to the isolation switch and then on the battery. The negative runs directly to the battery, uninterrupted. The power cables can now be connected to the battery, together with the caravan's regular power cables. Cut the cables to the appropriate length and remove 5 mm of insulation. Once again, ensure that the connectors are solidly crimped. The wiring is now complete. Initial system engagements and test. The control unit is shipped with the handset already paired. If, however, the unit needs to be repaired at any time, the procedure is as follows. With the battery connected and isolator switched on, press the recessed reset button next to the indicator LEDs on the control unit. The green LED should flash. Then press the power switch on the handset twice and the green LED will now be on continuously. The pairing sequence is now complete. Operating the Enduro system is simple. Double press the power button on the remote handset to switch to system on. Press forward and reverse arrows to check the roller's function and rotate correctly. Switch off the mover by pressing the power button once. To engage the mover, attach the engagement tool on the spindle so that it is parallel with the ground. Then rotate it through 180 degrees towards the tire. The system uses a sprung over center cam mechanism that engages and locks the motor rollers to the caravan tires. To disengage the rollers, just reverse the procedure. That's it. Now you're ready to let the Enduro Caravan Mover take the strain and let you relax.